Three days ago, we learned that the German government is worried. They say they're very worried that Volkswagen is quote unquote heading down the road to nowhere. Volkswagen apparently, according to sources within the German ministry, could be facing its biggest crisis since the 2015 diesel scandal. Now, within 24 hours of this report coming out in Germany, we also found out the European Union is aiming to stop or slow down the cars, electric cars, coming from China. They're worried that, um, well, the Chinese are going to take over the automotive market in Europe, and they're now launching a probe saying that Chinese subsidies are actually what's going to kill the automotive industry in Europe, so they need to be stopped. So, clearly, Stellantis and BMW, who have been complaining about the Chinese in Europe, have had an effect on the European Union. Shortly after taking the most important job in German industry, Volkswagen Group CEO Oliver Bloom got some very bad news. A top executive had been dispatched to China to review the competitive landscape, and his assessment was grim. At the company's headquarters in Wolfsburg, a sprawling factory complex the size of Monaco itself, he told his new boss that Europe's largest automaker was losing the electric vehicle race in its most important market, China, and had no prospect of catching up on its own. It simply wasn't possible. Volkswagen had fallen behind in China during the pandemic. And by the time the country began to reopen, BYD, NIO, Tesla, and other local brands had doubled the number of plug-in hybrid and fully electric vehicles being sold with most cheaper and better than Volkswagen's offerings. This is not my opinion. I'm sharing with you what a Volkswagen executive has said. Those new competitors are now turning toward Europe as China's economy stumbles. And while we now know that thousands of dealerships in China have gone bankrupt, most of them being dealerships that are legacy auto, brands from all the brands you know. The extra pressure comes as Volkswagen and other German manufacturers feel the strain of high energy prices in the fallout from the country's long reliance on Russia. Half a world away, Tesla has continued to expand. Automotive News says that Tesla has laid claim to leadership on in automotive innovation, undermining the German giant's cash cow Audi alongside Mercedes-Benz and BMW. Instead of sleek Audi sedans claiming Vorsprung Dirch technique, Teslas have become the choice for consumers wanting to show they're on the cutting edge. Now, you may or may not agree with this. This is simply a report from Volkswagen and Automotive News. The competitive vice squeezing Volkswagen from top to bottom and from the US to China might evolve into its biggest crisis since 2015 when the diesel emissions cheating scandal rocked the company, costing it more than $100 billion. The issues could be even harder to overcome and reflect the risks looming over Europe's largest economy, Germany. The auto industry is faced in Germany with a question of whether and how we will be global leader in the future, German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock said at the IAA Mobility Auto Show in Munich last week. Now, I think it's pure delusion that a German minister would think that it's even possible for Germany to be the global leader in the automotive industry in the future. That just seems like that race has been won and done. It's over. Anyhow, she said, for our nation, where the auto industry accounts for a very large share of value creation, this is not just an economic issue, but also an issue of our country's security. The time for Volkswagen to get its EV strategy right is running out. An inflection point is coming, and the group says automotive news in Europe risks getting confined to the waning market for combustion engine cars and lacking the volumes to support its bloated structure. The company, of course, has more than 186 billion euro, euro, more than 186 billion US dollars in debt, but it's saying that it will borrow an additional 200, some of which it's already borrowed, meaning its debt could blow up to as much as 350 plus billion by the time we get to 2027. 
Its struggles are evident in a market value that is less than one tenth of Tesla's, even though revenue is more than triple that of Tesla itself. And the competitive pressure is evident in the aggressive price war in China, where many brands are selling at a loss. In fact, almost all of them are, only a few are not. The company has already spun off minority stakes in sports car makers Porsche in order to raise funds, and its heavy trucks unit Tratton and calls for a deeper breakup may grow louder if it starts losing market share in Europe, said Daniel Roska, an analyst with Bernstein. But Bloom and the team are banking on Volkswagen's vast resources paying off as electric vehicles go more mainstream. It's a marathon, and not everyone in a marathon who comes out fastest will be seen first or all at the finish line, said Ralph Brandstetter, Volkswagen's China boss. I don't know about this concept of a marathon. I think sometimes a marathon can be won in the first few years. I mean, if you start a marathon race three years or four years or even five years behind your competition, pretty hard to catch up. I've never heard of anyone starting a marathon race halfway in and then catching up and winning. That would be my analogy in response to that bizarre analogy from Volkswagen. At Europe's biggest auto exhibition this year, China's automakers showed that they are ready to take the fight to Germany and the European Union is fighting back. However, their ranks at the Munich show more than doubled compared with 2021, and BYD positions its new SEAL electric sedan, which will start at around 45,000 euros when it goes on sale later this year as a direct rival to Tesla's Model 3, and of course, Volkswagen's EVs as well. Volkswagen symbolizes the economic miracle of Germany's post-war recovery like few other companies. The ongoing challenges of the company and country are still equally intertwined, but Volkswagen themselves said recently, the roof is on fire. It said, our business, our automotive business is sick. That's the word that they used. Both Germany and the Volkswagen Group are heavily exposed to the risks posed by China's growing industrial and political ambitions. The Asian superpower is Germany's largest trading partner. Mercedes has made this point. They can't just cut off trading with China. It's impossible. And it's the source of nearly 40% of Volkswagen Group's global deliveries last year and 50% of its profits. I mean, for example, if the Volkswagen Group were to bite the hand that feeds it, which is China, it would lose 50% of its profits and 40% of its sales. That's a huge problem when you have the second highest debt level of any company in the world. Also, the struggle to pivot to cars that rely on software more than horsepower is indicative of Germany's difficulties adopting in the digital era. Like Germany, Volkswagen is complex and slow moving, sort of like a slow Titanic veering towards an iceberg. The company employs nearly 700,000 people across more than 100 factories around the world. It makes everything from exotic Lamborghini supercars to thrifty Skoda hatchbacks. I should point out that it sold a large percentage of Lamborghini to rematch. It also owns powerful Scania trucks. Complicated internal power dynamics, which influenced the firing of Herbert Diess, bog down change. It's slow moving. While hubris or arrogance says Automotive News Europe has been fueled by decades of success. The car industry in Germany is closely intertwined with other branches in the manufacturing and services sector. Production still has not reached its pre-pandemic level, making it an important factor behind the ongoing weakness of the German industrial sector, said Martin Adamer, economist at Bloomberg Economics. It's worth keeping in mind, Volkswagen was once the largest seller of vehicles in China. Well, it's since been surpassed by BYD. Propelled by government policy, China's shift to EVs is happening even faster than other countries. EVs are set to account for half of all cars sold in China by 2025. That's not far away. China's threat to German automotive supremacy was on display in Munich at the car show recently. BMW executives marveled at the sleek Cybester Roadster from Saik's MG brand. It's affordable, it's fast, and it looks desirable. The Cybester will go on sale next year, starting at around 57,000 euros, in line with BMW's old, dated, 
gasoline powered Z4 or Z4, depending on what country you pronounce it from. Over at BYD, Volkswagen's top labor representative, Daniela Cavallo, intently watched its presentation. Our international competition is not sitting idle, said Hildegard Mueller, head of Germany's automotive lobby, the VDA. Our companies are mainly generating their profits abroad, helping to keep jobs in Germany. But the pressure is rising because of weak economic growth and conditions that are no longer internationally competitive. Alongside a smattering of technical advances, German brands focused on heritage, something Tesla and Chinese rivals can't match. And that's true. At Mercedes-Benz, the automaker had a mocked up electric version of its experimental C111 supercar from 1970. But I'm not sure if anyone is really all that interested in a supercar from 1970. The automotive show in Munich is meant to be a display of modern technology. What are you doing in the future? Not what were you doing 50 years ago? BMW's new class deliberately recalls its groundbreaking line of cars from the 1960s and Volkswagen displayed the GTI electric car that it will soon build. It's a Golf GDI for the future. With Bloom now in the job as CEO of the Volkswagen Group for one year, the contours of his response to the alarm bells from last October are taking shape. The effort involves a host of new partners, a third try at a competitive electric car platform, or just buying Chinese ones such as Xpeng, Seik, and Elite Motor, and overhauling management at Cariad, Volkswagen's in-house software developer that has failed to keep pace with Tesla and other rivals, and has been the source of many internal struggles and politics at the company. Every company has to start with itself, to innovate, to develop, and at the end, to perform, Bloom said at the Auto Show in Munich. It's up to us. The most aggressive move was paying 700 million US dollars for around a 5% stake in Chinese automaker Xpeng. The stake in the money losing company, which has been on a drastic sales decline over the past six months and is not in the top 10 for EV sales even in China, was the price Volkswagen was willing to pay for access to a technology platform to help fast track its mainstream electric car offerings. It was widely taken, last ditch attempt at a turnaround. It's worth pointing out though, that is not Xpeng's new electric car platform. Xpeng have a newer version they're using today and they're working on an even better newer version. And it's not a structural battery pack based platform either. Already with three joint ventures in Europe, the Xpeng deal was preceded by new cooperation agreements with a battery maker, an autonomous driving specialist, and an infotainment developer. Volkswagen is basically outsourcing everything. The expanded roster of Chinese partners piles on complexity and deepens entanglements in a country increasingly antagonistic toward the West. For the 55-year-old Bloom, Automotive News Europe says he has been at Volkswagen since joining a trainee program in 1994. The approach sticks to a familiar playbook. When in doubt, expand by others. It's a common strategy for a group that operates 10 brands and counting. Volkswagen is structurally skewed toward expansion, with the main power players keen to protect their turf and agreements, often requiring time-consuming horse trading. There are, des there are the descendants of Ferdinand Porsche, who created the concept for the iconic Beetle and are keen to keep dividends flowing. Volkswagen's home state of Lower Saxony which has a special blocking minority, and the company's powerful works council have caused enormous internal conflict. Volkswagen is like a big tanker ship that needs a lot of time to make a turn, said Matthias Miedrick, CEO of Belgian manufacturer Umicor, which has a deal to supply the automaker with battery materials. Once the tanker turns ship starts to turn, you just cannot stop it. The inclination to grow to fix a problem is also evident in Volkswagen's efforts in the United States. The German automaker has struggled to play a major role in the market ever since the Volkswagen Beetle faded away in the late 1970s. 
The latest push includes a new $2 billion factory in South Carolina to revive the off-road Scout brand, which has been dormant for 40 years. Beginning in 2026, the plan is to make battery-powered SUVs and pickups as a retro-themed answer to Tesla Cybertruck and models from US EV startup Rivian. But Volkswagen's messy, convoluted transition to EVs has its roots in the diesel emissions cheating scandal. For years, the company has pushed clean diesel as a fuel-efficient alternative to plug-in hybrids, only to eventually acknowledge that those claims were bogus and millions of its vehicles had emitted illegal amounts of dangerous pollution. The revelations tarnished Germany's reputation for engineering prowess and triggered a catch-up strategy under Bloom's predecessor, Herbert Diess. The former BMW executive, who joined just before the diesel cheating scandal, vowed to carry out historic change, but he ruffled feathers. In particular, the union, who were concerned that Volkswagen moving to electric cars too quickly would decimate the auto industry jobs. They thought that it would cut jobs by more than 50%, so therefore they opposed Volkswagen and other German manufacturers moving to EVs too fast. In fact, they still oppose it to this day. In early 2022, as pressure on Dies grew, Volkswagen hired McKinsey to help figure out a plan to fix Cariad. Developers from Audi, Porsche, and the software unit struggled with infighting due to brand allegiances and were overwhelmed by the task of building out two platforms, one for Audi and Porsche, and another for the Volkswagen Group brands. Ineffective top-down decision-making and managers with no experience overseeing software development made the situation far worse. Dies wanted to disrupt Volkswagen's culture. He brought in Elon Musk to give a speech to his managers. That didn't go down well. He zipped over the water of the Wolfsburg factory canal in a hydrofoil and donned a Batman mask to promote new models. But by last summer, his shock on our approach had outlasted its welcome. The Works Council, who are very powerful in Germany, obviously played a very instrumental role in his ousting. The situation at Cariad, the software unit, remained so dire after taking over in September, Bloom created a savior crew to develop a new strategy and cancelled the five-year financial planning update that autumn. Then Volkswagen made a drastic decision. They purchased a Chinese software company to solve the problems for 1.2 billion US dollars. As a Volkswagen lifer, Bloom also head of the Porsche brand, which is close to the Porsche Peach family is well-schooled in navigating the company's many factions. While that might bring calm to Wolfsburg, there are questions whether adding yet more partners in China will pay off, and how Bloom's steps to finally squeeze more returns from Volkswagen's mass market brands are very different from previous attempts that just failed to deliver. His key priorities involve fixing Cariad, the software unit, stabilizing market share in China, which I believe is virtually impossible, growing in the US, which is definitely possible, raising the Volkswagen brand's profit margins and building a competitive EV portfolio at Audi. None of this is quick, none of this is easy, and some of it may not even be possible. In his first year on the job, he swapped out the Audi chief, tasked the namesake Volkswagen brand with finding savings to boost earnings by 10 billion euros by 2026 and started a portfolio review for possible asset sales. However, it was around this period in time that the company said it was losing billions and it shut down its EV factory or one of them because it said there simply wasn't enough demand for its EVs at the prices it was asking for them. While Volkswagen is dogged by complexity and power struggles, it has deep pockets to fight back. Its auto division had 33.6 billion euros in net liquidity at the end of June. And after listing a minority stake in Porsche a year ago, there are plenty of other options to raise more money if needed. However, it also has $187 billion in debt. 
and it plans on borrowing another 200 billion. Competition should spur us on, but not scare us, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said in a speech at the car show. In the 1960s, it was said that Japanese cars would overrun all other markets. 20 years later, it was cars made in Korea. And today, it's supposedly Chinese electric cars. I believe the German government are underestimating Chinese electric cars and the Chinese automotive industry. Keep in mind, China has virtually taken over every other manufacturing sector. There's only one left for them. That's the automotive industry. And they want it. Big time. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.